In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at continuous random variables. And they are random variables that can assume amounts that are not always whole numbers. Uh, they're measured and not counted. Uh, things that are counted uh, would be a discrete random variable because they can only assume generally whole number amounts. For example, the number of people at a concert, uh, the number of times you do something. Uh, as soon as it says the number of, it's discrete. Uh, so I'm going to give you four examples of things that would be uh, continuous here. So for example, the height or mass of a person. You would measure the height or measure the mass of a person. You measure the height with, for example, a tape measure. And you can always measure things more accurately. So for example, uh, you could measure somebody's height to be 170 centimeters, for example. And if you used a more accurate uh, precise measuring tool, maybe that you get instead that their height is 170.1 centimeters. And then if you had an even more accurate tool, maybe they're actually 170.13 centimeters tall. And so you can always measure more accurately, and so that's why this would be a continuous random variable. Another example is the amount of gasoline in an SUV's tank. For example, uh, the gas gauge is measuring the amount in there to tell you that's a half or three quarters or whatever fraction left. Uh, you could actually have a device that would actually tell you how many liters or gallons are in there, for example. Uh, and, it, and once again, you know, the, it might tell you that there's uh, 30 liters left. And if you calibrated it to be more precise, you know, maybe there's 30.25 uh, liters in the tank and you can measure it even more accurately too. Uh, the amount of how much honey is in a beehive, you would measure that to say how many liters or maybe you're uh, actually taking the weight of it uh, would be in the beehive but you're still measuring it. Uh, time is also something that you would measure. The time to drive between Dryden and the communities of Dryden and Sulaco, Ontario and Canada, uh, time is something you would measure. In the first, in the example number one, uh, 13 people ran in a 400 meter race and their times are listed below. So uh, what I would normally do is make a tally chart. And so I broke this down into categories that were basically two seconds long. So 53 to 54.99 and then 55 to 56.99, etc. Now it's like you might say it's actually 1.99. It's not two seconds. So I'm rounding when I say two seconds. So <laughs> So the first uh, one is 53.15, so it's between 53 and 54.99, so I'd put a mark there. 54.2 uh, would uh, also be in the first category because it's between 53 and 54.99. And then 54.72 is uh, also in the first category, so we'll put a mark there. 56.22 would be bigger than 55 but below 56.99, so we'll put a mark there. And then the 55.9 uh, would uh, be between 55 and 56.99, so we'll put a mark there. Next we have 57.32, so that's going to be between 57 and 58.99, so we'll put a mark there. Uh, 58.41 would be uh, in this category too, between 57 and 58.99. So 55.2, so 55.2 would be in this one, be, uh, bigger than 55 but below 56.99. And 59.23, so that's in the fourth category, right there. Uh, 60.23 uh, would be in this one, the second highest one as well. And then we got 61.42, so that's bigger than 61, below, but below the 62.99. Uh, 59.41 would be in this category right here. And the last one, 54.1, would be... Uh, between the 53 and 54.999, so so that's why there's four here, four ticks, and then uh, three, two, three, and one. So that's where all those numbers come from. Now there's 13 people. If you didn't know how many data points there are, you could add up all the frequencies. Uh, four and three add to seven, two more is nine, three more is 12, and one more makes 13. So the probability of, the, of being in the first category would be four out of 13, or 0.31 or 31%. The next category is 3, so it would be 3 out of 13, and then 2 out of 13, 3 out of 13, and 1 out of 13. Notice that um, those probabilities, those fractions should add to 1. Those, all those 13s add to 13 thirteenths, or the decimals add to 1.00, which is true for any probability distribution. 
Now it says also draw a histogram for this data. So this is what the histogram would look like. Uh, the center of each of these categories is 54, 56, 58, etc. So that's what's at, at, the, at the bottom and the middle of each of these hist uh, histogram bars. This would actually be 53, this would be 55. So that first bar that goes from 53 to 54.99 would be this one. And then this is the one that goes from 55 to 56.99, etc. The heights are the frequencies 4, 3, 2, 3, and 1, 4, 3, 2, 3, and 1. And so that's what the, uh, the frequency histogram looks like. If we join together the midpoints of all those bars, uh, we get the frequency polygon. And if we uh, change the scale here so it's not the frequency anymore, but instead the uh, probabilities, then that frequency polygon beco becomes the probability density distribution. And so uh, that's what that would look like. On to example two in the next page. Uh, the following data uh, represents Mary's commute times to work over the period of a month. And so we're going to create a frequency table and, and then draw the probability dens density distribution. So uh, my first time is, uh, and I've broken this up into uh, five minute long intervals. So 30 to under 35, uh, 35 to under 40, uh, 40 to 44.9, etc. So 45.3 uh, would be in this uh, category here. So we'll put a mark there. Uh, 58.2 uh, would be in the uh, highest one here. Uh, 31.9 would be in uh, this one. 44.8 is going to go right here, just below the 44.9. 37.5 will be in the middle of this category, and then 38.6 uh, would be right here. Uh, 54 goes there, and then 59.3 would be in the bottom category, as will the 58.7. 32.2 uh, would be in the bottom one. 33.3 uh, same. 48.7 uh, will be in this category and we finish the top. 41.6 uh, would go right here. 39.8 uh, is uh, in the second category and 51.1 would be uh, down here. Uh, 44 is going to go, oh 52.4 sorry, 52.4 there. And then the 44 uh, would be in this category here. 36.6 uh, will be in the second one. Uh, 52 it's going to be right down here. 34.3 will be right in the bottom category, and 46.1 would be in the fourth one. 47.2 uh, will uh, be in the same. 43.9 uh, will be right here, and the 57.1 last will be in the highest category. Now notice that all of those tallies are the same. Uh, this example is, is going to uh, show what a uniform uh, continuous random variable looks like. And so when you have everything equally likely, all the tallies are the same, so the frequencies would all be 4 here. And so to calculate the probability, now there's, uh, there's 6 4s here, which is 24. So uh, to calculate the probability for this would be 4 to 24, which is 1 sixth. And of course the frequencies are all the same, so these will all be 1 sixth. And so uh, that's the uh, probability of being in each of the categories, or commute times being in each of the categories. They're all equally likely. So that's why this is called a uniform uh, random variable. And so this is what the probability density distribution would look like. 1 6 is 1.6 repeating. So that's this height right here, 1.67 approximately. And so the uh, that's what the, uh, the bars would look like. Um, the middle of each one, now from 30 to 35 would be 32.5, that's the middle. So basically that's 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, etc. And uh, so this is an example, as I said, of a uniform continuous random variable, since uh, each of the categories has exactly the same probabilities. That's why it's called uniform, they're all the same. So we're going to uh, calculate some probabilities on the, uh, the following and last page here. Uh, B asks, what is the probability Mary's commute time is less than 40 minutes. So less than 40 minutes, so this would be 40 minutes right here. So we're talking about from there and below. So that's the 40 minutes. Now the way you calculate this is it's really an area calculation. And so, and I'm going to simplify the area part in a moment here. And I'll put both of these up. So the top represents the area that we're talking about between the uh, 30 and 40 minutes, the area under the curve here actually, or, or line I suppose. 
So it's the area from the bottom of the graph to the 40 minutes we're trying to find, which is uh, the 40 minus 30. And the bottom is the total area under the curve between uh, 30 and 60. Now, when you simplify those, 40 minus 30 is 10, and 60 minus 30 is 30. Now, those, the 10 and the 30, are actually just the lengths across the bottom. Um, the reason it, it's actually the area, but I'm not going to bother with the whole area, and what I'm actually talking about here is this. See, if I wanted to calculate the, uh, the area of this gray rectangle, the distance across the bottom is that 10. You see, the height here is the probability. Remember, all those were 1 -sixth. So remember, area is length times width. So the length of that gray rectangle is 10. The height would be 1 -sixth. The total area under the curve, the 60 minus 30, which is 30 here. So see, this is actually 30 across here. So that's the length of the, rect the whole rectangle, and the height is 1 6. So 30 times 1 6 would be the actual area of the entire uh, curve, uh, whole, all the rectangles put together. Now those 1 6 actually just divide out, so we don't bother putting them in every time. And because they, div just div they actually divide out, then all we have to worry about is the ratio of the length across the bottom to the entire length. It's going to be going to give us the same probability. So 10 divided by 30 simplifies to a third, or 33.3%. It'd be 0.33 repeating. And so 33.3% would be that probability. Uh, C asks, what is the probability Mary's commute time is between 38 minutes and 55 minutes? So let's get rid of that bar. And between 38 minutes, so 38 would be about here, and 55 would be right there. So that's the, uh, the fraction that we're talking about. So the calculation very similar to the top one. Between 38 and 55, we will go 30, 55 minus 38. So that's going to be the length across the bottom here over the entire length, 60 minus 30. And so 55 minus 38 simplifies or subtracts to 17. And of course, we have 30 again at the bottom. And so we divide 17 by 30, and we get 0.567, which is 56.7%. So basically, that gray area is 56.7% of the entire area. Uh, D asks, what is the probability Mary's commute time is 45 minutes? Now, the problem with 45 minutes is we're now looking for an exact precise time, that her, her commute time is exactly 45 minutes. And you see, if I actually drew the bar, it would be 145, but it would have no length, no width across the bottom, because it would both start and end at 45. And so 45 minus 45 is actually 0. And I'd have 0 divided by 30, which, of course, is 0. The, you see, the, the probability of an exact value is 0 because like the chance of that particular time happening, because there's an infinite number of times between the lowest of 30 and the highest of 60, the probability of that one specific time is so small that, that it, the probability is 0. To give you a little more of an example, that's why I put E here. Um, this is what happens when you take a fairly short amount of time. So, uh, so instead of 45 minutes, let's say the probability, we're asked to find the probability your commute time is between 44 and a half minutes and 45 and a half minutes. So centered around 45 a minute long. So the probability looked like this. We will go 45.5 minus 44.5, uh, which in the numerator is 1, that's just 1 minute long, divided by 30. And 1 divided by 30 is... Uh, 3.3%. So if we take an interval of time length one minute, it's down to just a 3.3% chance of happening. So you see up here we actually had a time, a time length of zero. That's why zero divided by 30 give you a probability of zero. So in general, the probability of one exact outcome in a continuous random variable will always be zero. You're only going to get a non-zero probability when it's over a range of values. And that's the end of the video.